And I'm joined now by Representative Gary Hebel, a Democrat, and his Republican challenger, Tris Schaefer. Now, several times, Ms. Schaefer, we've heard or seen you talk about, I guess, brain drain in the state of Wisconsin. I believe you called two, our two biggest exports college graduates and retirees. Why do you think this is happening, and how does this state fix it? Well, it really is happening because of one main reason, and then there are a lot of, really, the, the this arms, the tentacles that come off of that, but it is the high taxing you know, t territory that we have here in Wisconsin. It's, uh, we've, we have a, an unfriendly tax climate. You know, we, are one, the set, we are actually the second highest taxing state in the nation. And of course, you've all heard the recent uh, review that we, Dane County is the highest taxing county in that state, in the state of Wisconsin here. So we really have a taxing situation and that brings the brain drain to the, ish to the forefront because we have a, a real trouble attracting good businesses. So these college seniors are seeking employment in other states. They're just looking for suitable employment. And uh, the other real big export problem we have are the, the uh, retirees. Uh, a few publications lately have given Wisconsin, you know, the ranking of the worst place to retire. And again, it's uh, in big part due to our high property tax. And, uh, you know, we also have onerous taxes on our retirements. And so it really does come down to a taxing situation. There are many other areas that we can do to, to improve upon that. but. Um, that really is the bottom line. Representative Hebel, what can we do to, uh, obviously a lot of the taxes, is property taxes to municipalities, school property taxes on the state level, you, this is a state office, but what, what can you say about property taxes and how can we rein those in as a state? Well, I think it's really important for our taxing process to be fair. And right now we have a situation where the last biennial budget dealt with $2.3 billion uh, payoff to special interest corporations and uh, other entities that really don't provide a lot of benefit. Right now, our taxing situation in Wisconsin really penalizes the middle class. The most important thing we can do as a legislature is to provide quality education to our students from K through 12 on to technical uh, school and also colleges, uh, universities. And that's the most important factor when it comes to job creation. You know, there's a lot of jobs that frankly are available in the state, and those jobs are going wanting because we are, do not allow our technical schools the ability to train many people that are interested in those jobs. I take welding, for example. There are a ton of welding jobs, but right now there's such a waiting list at our technical schools for these kind of jobs and this type of training. We need to be in touch with what the needs are and compare that with the educational process that we have. You know, we have cut. Uh, our education, $1.6 billion in this last month. That's a $1.6 billion to education. In Sun Prairie alone, we lost 1,000 years of educational experience because those teachers had to retire. And so what we do is we lose that experience and we are uh, defaulting as a result in our educational process. Now, it hasn't affected it immediately, but what happens with education is over time, you're going to devastate one of the greatest resources we have and one of the most important functions we have in terms of educating our students so that they can get a job in this market. Let's, I want Ms. Shaver to have a chance to kind of respond to that. We were going to generally have Gary respond to the next question, but this kind of leads to the, the next one. So, you know, because it was, it was your party, the Republicans primarily, that, uh, you know, and it's, it's a tough balance, but they chose to cut education funding dramatically in the last budget. How do you how do you kind of uh, view that cut? What does Wisconsin need to do to and again tough balance? But what, are they, what does the state need to do to improve public education? Well, actually, you know, it, the fact is that Wisconsin, even after the reforms that uh, Governor Walker put in place, Wisconsin is still one of the top ten states on per student spending. We are outspending nearly every other state, and in thirty seven states, we're outspending them by two thousand dollars per student. So this is even after the reforms have been put in place. Throwing more money at the situation is not the answer. Okay. We're gonna, we're gonna have a technical person come out real quick and just take a break. We're gonna um, just correct something on your mic so your audio is coming clear. I think your scarf might have banged on it a couple times. So I'm gonna have you, is somebody gonna come out and just fix I'm it? So yeah. Sorry to stop you. I just, I we'll just pick it up right where we left off. 
And I'm just going to move this down further, which I probably should have done before. And then you can put that back how you ever okay. you had it, and we'll just Thank make you. sure it doesn't hit. I want to hear what you say. Yeah, I wondered what it a, was. I heard it in my ear, and I was yeah, like, is that okay. David That'll trying to good. reach me? Or no. it was okay. kind of clunky. Right. Sorry, I apologize. We'll give you a chance to do that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Absolutely. Office. Gives you a second chance. You did well. That was our fault, but um, we want your audio to be clean and crisp so it's not distracting. And when he gets back to the booth, I'll just verify that we're ready to go. I assume we're, we're good to go. David? Is he, is he talk, is, are we good? Uh, he's coming to the booth right now. Okay. Thought I heard. Okay. So basically the question was, Republicans cut education funding. What can we do to kind of handle that, you know, balance that delicate, uh, you know, catch-22 and, and maintain high-quality public education despite those cuts? Well, Eric, the fact is, is that Wisconsin is amongst the highest spending per student ratio in the nation, even after the, the cuts that Governor Walker put in place and the reforms that were put in place. We are still amongst the top 10 spending states. We outspend, there are 37 states that we outspend by $2,000 per student. This is a big difference. Uh, it, this, this is a, not a problem that's going to be solved by simply throwing more money at it. And, and Representative Hebel, what do you say to that? I mean, uh, we, this, it's, again, a delicate balance because property taxes make, are made up a lot of public education funding. Um, and people are having a lot of some struggles, you know, paying those property tax bills. Um, what do you, how do you answer that, the education system? Well, we have great teachers in this state, no doubt. They're trying to manage with what they have, but how do you answer that? That's a, you answered my question uh, a little bit just by saying the great teachers that we do have. You know, this cut that occurred, was there was no warning. It's just we lopped it off just like that. You don't deal with professionals by cutting off a, a great percentage of what their income is. We, you know, on average, our teachers lost four to eight thousand dollars a year, and you can imagine what that would do to your budget or your budget. All of a sudden, just like that, you've lost that income. You know, we have to be very wise in how we spend our money. But again, the most important function I see as a legislator in this state legislature and our whole government in the state is to make sure that we provide quality education. Wisconsin is always ranked in one or two or three in, in the top educational performing states in the country. ACT tests are always number one or two. Sometimes Iowa beats us out. But we have always, always prided ourselves in education. You know, in Sun Prairie, we passed the largest referendum for a brand new high school of $95 million. That's the most any school has raised. What it tells you is that education is extremely important to my district. And Sun Prairie Cottage Grove, Sun Prairie is the fastest growing or one of the fastest growing cities in the state. Cottage Grove is one of the fastest growing villages in the state. What does that tell you? People want to live there. Why do they want to live there? Because of the quality of the education. And you start cutting that education, you lop off this and that and the other thing, it's not going to affect it immediately. But we've got excellent quality teachers. And when you start cutting their salaries to the point where they can make much more in the private sector, we're going to lose that quality. I'm not going to stand for that. I want to make sure that, hey, I come from a family of 17 children. My folks impress upon me, the only way you're going to get ahead in this world is make sure you get a good quality education. I've lived by that. Every single one of my family members have gone to college. Most of them have advanced degrees, and we realize how important education is. Trish, I have to respond. say, the fact of the matter is, Wisconsin, is we pay our teachers amongst the most across the nation. We are the highest, if not the highest, one of the highest paying with regards to teacher salaries. And uh, so I do, of course, believe teachers are very important, and there's no re refuting that at all. My sister's a teacher. I respect great teachers. And we just need to be able to afford our public employees. Now, the collective bargaining issue, of course, uh, was so huge uh, this last term, and uh, it's now in the court systems. But Trish, if you are elected, do you expect this, uh, do you think this will come to the floor again, and, and uh, do you think it'll be a topic of discussion? Well, I mean, it, I, I support Act 10, and I support putting the, the power, the decisions, the, you know, the, the reforms that are really necessary, I support putting that into the hands of the elected school board members and the parents. And uh, I think that was the most important uh, aspect of Act 10 was that it, it brought this control back to the people who need to be running these schools. 
and out of the hands of the special interest groups who are fighting reform every step of the way. Representative Hebel, uh, if, if it gets through the court systems and it's put back in place, Act 10, do you expect Democrats to, to battle against Act 10 again next session? Oh, certainly. And, you know, we talk about these so-called tools that the governor has given both the local municipalities and school boards to deal with their funding crisis. You talk to them about what tools they receive. Frankly, they're, they're battling very difficult financial situations. And a lot of schools, like Sun Prairie, the Stoughton School Districts, have reserves that they're spending now. And we're in a desperate situation. We're going to see significant cuts to the educational process. There are many elements of Act 10 that need to be either changed, reformed, or eliminated. The process, even the governor says that the process, if he had it to do over again, would have done it a different way. He would have been more informative. You know, we sat through, uh, our minority caucus sat through 140 hours of public hearings. We listened to over 18,000 citizens of this state testify as to how Act 10 would affect them. It is devastating what it has done. And you talk about collective bargaining as being part of this. Act 10 was like a budget repair bill. And collective bargaining is not part of the budget. It was totally wrong for the governor to throw in collective bargaining at the 11th hour, not advising anybody it was in there. And uh, that caused tremendous turmoil in the state. We need to be a state that works together to solve our problems and not this polarization, this divisive nature that frankly the governor and the majority party has put upon us. We need to get back to where we talk because these problems cannot be solved by one side or the other. We need to work together and find the best solutions. I want to I want to wrap this up by asking each of you kind of a basic question. It's almost like student council, first grade student council uh, type question. but. Um, and I'll start with Representative Hebel. You've been at this a while now, uh, experienced legislator. What is it, why is it that you want to go back uh, and continue to do this job in, in, at the Capitol? First of all, I want to thank you, Eric, for doing this. Uh, this is a wonderful public service. I've been on the cable board in Sun Prairie for 35 years. That's access, where public access uh, informs the community about what's going on. I've been on that for 35 years. I believe it's really important that our populace is educated on what the issues are. And frankly, I see Wisconsin awakening to what really is going on in politics, and they are much more interested, much more vocal in what's going on. I personally have practiced law in Sun Prairie for 36 years. I grew up in that city, and I love Sun Prairie. I love Dane County. And Madison, I'm so proud to be part of Dane County because it's such a vital part of our country. I want to return to my community as my parents taught me. My dad was county clerk in Dane County from 1966 to 1982. He taught me the importance of public service. You don't do it for the money. You do it because you, you can solve problems and you can help people get to where they want to be. I don't know if you've ever run a marathon. I've run five. Oh, I don't know if you've ever given blood, but I've given blood. There's a certain feeling that you get that money doesn't pay. It's just the satisfaction of knowing you're doing your level best to help people who are in very difficult situations. So it really is an honor and a, a real pleasure to be a representative for this district. Granted, the last two years have been no picnic, and it's been extremely frustrating for me. But the bottom line is public service is a very noble function, and I really enjoy doing it. Thank you. And, and Trish, we want to offer you the same opportunity. Why do you want to run for this seat? Well, quite frankly, Eric, I do believe that I can do a better job representing the people of the 46th District. Um, Gary Hebel is certainly um, one of, if not the most extreme assembly people on, on the, the very hard liberal side. And uh, this District 46 is actually the most conservative district in all of Dane County. Um, you know, I, I'm a small business owner. I'm a parent. I have children in public school. I, am, I have, for the last 16 years, employed, uh, you know, we employ now 37 people in three Wisconsin cities. And I understand how to balance budgets. I understand how to create good jobs. I understand how to adapt to hard times. I'm also a professionally trained mediator, and I expect to bring those skills to the Capitol so that we can, in fact, work to get things done. Um, I, I was motivated to do this due to de watching the demonstration of, of Representative Hebel in his extreme partisanship um, with, you know, never before in our, the history of our legislature has 
uh, either party, Republican or Democrat, worn a uniform for a special interest on the floor of the assembly. And Mr. Hebel wore a public union t-shirt for days. And um, you know, it, the fact is, 86% of us do not work for public unions. And he was elected to represent all the people of the district. And I think he has uh, failed us in that. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us here in studio. And uh, best of luck to both of you on Election Day. Thank, thank you, you for Eric. the Good to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to meet you. Thank you. All right, David, we're good?